In September 2024, I was joined by four friends on a journey of a lifetime. We did a self-supported 350-mile ride from D.C. to Pittsburgh along the Chesapeake and Ohio Canal towpath and the Great Allegheny Passage. On this day, we rode 51 miles from Swain's Lock Hiker Biker Campsite to the KOA and Harper's Ferry. Highlights included Monocacy and Catoctin Aqueducts, White's Ferry, and Brunswick. It's day two of our CNO and Gap journey on Swain's Lock Campground. 62 degrees this morning. Sunrise is in about uh, 6.45, maybe in about 15 minutes, hopefully. We're going to be getting going today. Plan is to have lunch in Brunswick and stay overnight at the KOA and Harper's Ferry. About 47, 50 miles worth of riding today. us longer than planned to get packed up and rolling. You might say this would be a consistent theme throughout our journey. However, we did get more efficient later in the trip. This is Lock House 22. It would have been occupied by the lock keeper. The lock keeper was expected to move boats through the locks 24 hours a day, seven days a week. This is one of seven canal quarters that are available for rent. This bridge carries us over inlet lock number two. It was used to regulate flow of water entering the system from behind dam two. It also allowed boats to enter and exit the canal and cross the Potomac to Virginia. We are approaching the first of 11 aqueducts built from Georgetown to Cumberland. An aqueduct is a bridge that carries water. Seneca Aqueduct and Lock 24 are combined into a single structure. This is the only place on the canal where this was necessary. The aqueduct, lock house, and lock are all constructed of Seneca red sandstone quarried just west of here. The same sandstone was used in the Smithsonian, Castle, and Washington, D.C. Hiker biker campsites like Horse Pen Branch are conveniently located along the trail. There is no fee or reservations. Stays are limited to one night and they usually have at least one picnic table, a chemical toilet, grill, and a water pump. Please note the water is not potable and must be treated or filtered before using. On our left are the ruins of Jarbo's store. During the late 19th century and early 20th century, Eugene Jarbo ran a grocery and a feed store here. He also served as postmaster at Edwards Ferry. Lockhouse 25 can be reserved for overnight stays. The stone aqueduct that spanned Broad Run was destroyed in a high water event. Aqueducts and culverts were both used to allow water to cross under the canal. Typically, aqueducts were only constructed to cross rivers and culverts were used for streams. White's Ferry would be our next stop. It was established in the early 1800s and was the last operating ferry over the Potomac River. The ferry closed in June of 2021. Hopefully it will reopen again someday. The White's Ferry store and grill caters to trail users. The iron bridge here was built in 1865 to provide improved ferry access replacing a narrow culvert that was used prior to its construction. Lock 26, which was built to accommodate two boats, stern to bow, has been filled to prevent the brownstone walls from crumbling inward. This spectacular seven-arch structure was constructed of white and pink quartz sandstone. It's the longest aqueduct along the CNO Canal, measuring 516 feet. The water is 20 feet wide and its sides are 6 feet tall. The towpath is 8 feet wide. Confederate General D.H. Hill considered destroying the aqueduct during the 1862 Maryland Campaign. No 
Lentz Ferry operations were licensed here as far back as 1735. It connected a north-south route that became known as the Carolina Road. In fact, a young Thomas Jefferson crossed the Potomac here on May 10, 1776 on his way to signing a Declaration of Independence in Philadelphia. Calico Rocks Hiker Biker Campsite is named for the type of composite rocks found in this area. Also called Potomac Marble, Calico Rocks are a mix of pebbles and limestone. Point of Rocks Railroad Tunnel was built in the 1860s. Both the C&O Canal Company and the B&O Railroad reached Point of Rocks by 1832. It was here that the C&O Canal locked horns with the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad in a four-year court battle over the right-of-way from Point of Rocks to Harper's Ferry. The railroad was forced to build two tunnels through Catoctin Ridge, and once the canal went out of business, the railroad added a second track outside of the tunnels. Lockhouse 28 was built in 1837 and as part of the canal quarters program, it's available for overnight stays. Lock 29 is constructed of granite from Virginia. It was the site of an 1864 Confederate raid during which John Mosby's raiders set fire to an excursion boat called the Flying Cloud. The Catoctin Creek Aqueduct was known as the Crooked Aqueduct because canal boats had to make a sharp turn to cross it. The structural integrity of the elliptical arch in the center was not as strong as the shorter semicircular arches on the sides. As a result, it began sagging in the early 1900s. In 1973, two years after the National Historical Park was established, it collapsed. A $3 million reconstruction of the 92-foot-long aqueduct was completed in 2011. This bridge over Little Catoctin Creek was built to replace an NPS bridge that was washed out in a 2018 flash flood event. The creek was originally crossed via a culvert. On the left of the railroad crossing is the former Baltimore and Ohio Railroad Depot, which opened in 1891. Brunswick was a sleepy little village until 1890 when the B&O Railroad moved their large freight yard here from Martinsburg. We came to Brunswick in search of lunch. This would be the first of many excursions into towns for a meal. We toured the city a bit before we had lunch outdoors at the Potomac Street Grill. The food and service were fantastic, and I highly recommend eating here. Our bellies full, we returned to the towpath and continued west. From Lock 31 to the bridge at Harper's Ferry, the towpath is also used by Appalachian trail hikers. The keen observer will notice the white rectangular blazes on a brown post and perhaps see through hikers carrying backpacks as they journey over 2,000 miles from Georgia to Maine. Starting to open up a little bit here. We have reached the confluence of the Potomac and Shenandoah Rivers. Here two railroad bridges carry trains from a tunnel through Maryland Heights across the Potomac River to West Virginia. And this is where we left the towpath for our overnight accommodations at the Harpers Ferry KOA. There are bike racks here for those who prefer to leave their bikes and walk across the bridge to visit Harpers Ferry National Historical Park or check out the town. Could have ridden that. Yeah, that's good. I gotta go back to my it wasn't easy getting up those stairs with our loaded bikes, but we did it. As luck would have it, we were treated to the sights and sounds of a train emerging from the tunnel. Cyclists are required to walk their bikes across the bridge as the walkway is narrow and there are lots of pedestrians. The bridge provides excellent views of the confluence of the Shenandoah and Potomac Rivers. What does that sign say up there? It's Menon's Borated Talcum Toilet Powder, <laughs> obviously. The steep and narrow ride up High Street was a significant challenge for our group as we headed to the KOA. It was not the last or the most difficult climb of the trip. That was Thumbs up to you. Yeah, thank you. 
We passed Bolivar Heights on the way to the KOA. We returned here the next morning and explored this and more of Harpers Ferry National Historical Park. It was pizza and wings night at the KOA and it was game on for our hungry riders. It's Friday night and today we finished 50 miles. We're staying at a KOA campground in Harpers Ferry, West Virginia. And we uh, stopped in Brunswick today. We saw a bunch of cool stuff, a couple nice aqueducts along the uh, CNO Canal. And uh, tomorrow we're gonna check out uh, Harpers Ferry Historic District in the park before heading back across the river and continuing on the CNO Canal to uh, Antietam National Battlefield. We're gonna check that out tomorrow. We'll probably have lunch in uh, Sharpsburg. And then we're gonna go on to our campground. So, more fun tomorrow, a little less mileage, a lot more uh, national park fun. Hey everybody, see you tomorrow. Subscribe now and don't miss day three of our epic DC to Pittsburgh journey. We'll ride 46 miles and explore Harpers Ferry National Historical Park and Antietam National Battlefield along the way. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.